You and Your Young Child, a program of information and services available for you and your child from prenatal to age five. You and Your Young Child has been brought to you in part by Minor Family Dentistry and by the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. Minor Family Dentistry would like to bring you the following dental health tip. It's recommended to have a dental checkup no later than your child's first birthday. An adult should brush for a young child and monitor older children's brushing to ensure a good job is done. Flossing should start when teeth are touching. Minor Family Dentistry wishes you good dental health. Families, including children of all ages, are welcome. Minor Family Dentistry, 1010 Downing and Hayes. Find them in the next tech directory. So, you think you have skeletons in your closet? Come to Sternberg Museum, where we let our skeletons out of the closet. Hello, and welcome to You and Your Young Child, the program devoted to early childhood. My name is Dana Stanton, and I'm the coordinator of Early Childhood Grants for USD 489. And with me today is Linda Beach. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Now, you are from the Ellis County Extension Office, Extension Office. So first of all, just tell us a little bit about what you do there and what kind of services you provide. Well, the Ellis County Extension Office is a branch of K-State Research and Extension here in Ellis County. And our whole mission is to extend, mm -hmm. that's how we get the name, mm -hmm. extend information from the experts at Kansas State University to the people in Ellis County in whatever ways we can do that. Mm -hmm. And I work specifically with family and consumer sciences, so the topics I deal with help people um, in, with issues concerning home and family life. Mm -hmm. Now, we're filming this in September, um, and it's kind of a special month in your office, so we're going to talk about something. What's special about September? September is special because it's National Food Safety Month, and that's a time set aside to draw attention to the importance of keeping food safe and preventing foodborne illness. Mm -hmm. Now, why would this be important for, you know, this, this program we talk to and um, focus on young families and young children, why would that be important for young families and children? Well, you know, food safety is really important to everyone, but it is especially important to groups that we know are at higher risk of serious consequences from foodborne illness. Mm -hmm. And uh, the vulnerable groups for foodborne illness include the very young, mm -hmm. the very old, and people with um, weakened immune systems or people who might already be ill. Mm -hmm. And so um, that certainly involves uh, young families, especially pregnant moms, we're even talking about their unborn children, newborn infants, and, a, and young children. Mm -hmm. So it's a problem that we need to talk about. Yeah. Foodborne illnesses, <laughs> tell us more about that. What is that? Well, a foodborne illness is different from a cold or a touch of the flu. You may have some similar symptoms, mm -hmm. but the difference is a foodborne illness um, comes to someone because they either eat or drink microorganisms or contaminants in their food or beverages. Mm -hmm. And foodborne illnesses are not spread from person to person, like a sneeze during mm -hmm. cold season, but instead a foodborne illness um, is something that we consume and the microorganism or the, the contaminant comes to us that way. Mm -hmm. uh, foodborne illness is uh, surprisingly common. Uh, we may think of it as being that little touch of the flu or, gee, I have My a little, off. Yeah, yeah, I have a, a stomach ache or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the CDC estimates there are 48 million cases of foodborne illness every year. And that averages out to about one in six Americans who get sick every year from something they eat or drink. Mm -hmm. And um, the challenge is that there are so many different bacteria and viruses that can cause foodborne illness, and the symptoms vary from just mild tummy discomfort mm -hmm. to serious life-threatening illness. Um, and uh, the, the symptoms are hard to determine because sometimes it may be hours or days or even weeks after exposure to that mm -hmm. contaminated food before someone actually develops the illness. Mm -hmm. Now, what co thinking about foodborne illnesses, what would be a particular concern for young families? 
Well, um, the one that I particularly want to mention today is a bacteria called Listeria monocytogenes, and it's a real mouthful. It we, sounds bad. <laughs> we just call it Listeria, mm -hmm. and that's important because it's really um, devastating to pregnant women and their uh, infants and children. Listeria is the third lead leading cause of death from foodborne illness, but it's not a co as common a foodborne illness. It's so serious that when someone gets a listeria infection, they nearly always need hospitalization, and one out of five people who get listeria actually don't survive. Mm -hmm. um, and what we know is that 90% of the people who are stricken with listeria are um, either um, pregnant women and their newborn children or older adults over age 65. Mm -hmm. So it's a real challenge. So for that leads family. me to my my question, <laughs> listeria, young family, so that would be a, a specific concern exactly. for them. That's yeah. exactly right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and listeria is such a problem because it's a bacteria that breaks the rules. You know, I was always taught in my training that if we keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold, Don't cross -contaminate. we are going to be safe, okay? We're, we're going to really be okay. Mm -hmm. But listeria is a hardy germ that can survive at refrigerator temperatures. Mm -hmm. And so that's what makes it especially pesky. Um, another thing is that listeria infection may not show itself in symptoms for weeks after uh, it's been uh, in introduced into the body. So it's really hard to track down what the offending food might have been. Um, listeria also can contaminate many foods that we don't necessarily cook. So heat will kill bacteria or will kill the listeria bacteria, but if it's a dish that's not served hot, then... Mm -hmm. Uh, listeria continues to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And listeria can also um, contaminate some things that we don't even think of with foodborne illness, like cantaloupe and mm -hmm. celery and raw sprouts have mm -hmm. been involved in listeria outbreaks. Mm -hmm. So listeria is a problem for several reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, you've, we've got some foods with us here. So you mentioned mm -hmm. some. So what are some common foods that listeria might lurk in? Well, the most common culprits are moist, high-protein foods that uh, aren't usually cooked. And so I brought some examples today. Some of the foods that have been identified with listeria outbreaks in the past include hot dogs that are eaten raw or cold. Well, kids eat hot dogs. <clears throat> exactly. Mm -hmm. um, deli meats, meat products like deli meat salads, spreads, dips, those kinds of things. Um, soft cheeses, especially those that are not made with pasteurized milk. So some of the uh, gourmet or imported or homemade kinds of ethnic cheeses mm -hmm. may be a problem. Certainly raw unpasteurized milk is uh, an issue with listeria that's been identified, as well as smoked seafood that is cured or uh, preserved by smoking but never got hot enough to kill bacteria, mm -hmm. and even raw sprouts. And I like sprouts. Well, you know, sprouts are kind of popular and trendy. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily the sprout itself, but the medium in which the seeds are sprouted, that water that's kept at, um, you know, room temperature mm -hmm. or uh, refrigerator temperatures. So mm -hmm. sprouts can also be um, a listeria issue mm -hmm. as well. Prevention. How do we prevent um, anyone, but especially young families, from contracting this listeria? Well, in general, we can prevent uh, foodborne illness by following the four main steps, which are clean, separate, cook, and chill. So obviously, clean hands and clean surfaces, keeping things separate so there's not cross-contamination, cooking thoroughly and using a food thermometer to make sure that we've reached those endpoint temperatures, and chilling things down, keeping them cold, refrigerating um, uh, products promptly. But also, in particular, to reduce the risk of listeria, we don't want to eat these kinds of foods unless, and I'm thinking hot dogs and deli meats, unless they're steaming hot. Mm -hmm. So we've got to cook the hot dogs. Deli meats, it may even be worth taking a, a couple of slices in your tongs, running it through a pan of boiling water to get it good mm -hmm. and hot, or making that ham and cheese sandwich a hot ham and cheese or a grilled ham and cheese mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. um, don't drink unpasteurized milk. Avoid unpasteurized products like soft cheeses um, that are refrigerated. And um, watch out for even homemade jerky. I think I might be concerned about if I was expecting um, mm -hmm. because it needs to reach certain hot temperatures to kill bacteria. And we've got recommendations to help people know how mm -hmm. to keep that safe. 
lots of information, probably too much for us to cover here. If people have uh, additional questions, want to have find out more information, how do they get hold of you? Well, you can reach us at the Ellis County Extension Office. We're at 601 Main here in Hayes. The phone number is 785-628-9430. But you know, folks can even find some great, reliable food safety resources online. Centers for Disease Control, USDA, the Federal Food and Drug Administration have some great materials that folks can access uh, anytime from their own home. And if you come into the Ellis County Extension Office, I can give a copy of the book here, which is called Food Safety for Pregnant Women, that gives some great reminders as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Linda. Wonderful information. Oh, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good time to think about food safety. It is, always. <laughs> You've been watching You and Your Young Child, the program devoted to early childhood. Parents, remember, you are your child's first and best teacher. Thank you. Thanks for watching You and Your Young Child a program of information and services available for you and your child from prenatal to age five. You can watch the program weekdays in the noon and nine o'clock hours. You and Your Young Child has been brought to you in part by Minor Family Dentistry and by the Sternberg Museum of Natural History.